Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, no problem. Okay, <laughs> okay Stefan, thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much for taking time from the beautiful city of Paris. Um, thank you. Okay, very good. We'll move on. Uh, and uh, hopefully you're involved, be involved with us and we're doing other presentations. And you're welcome. Any of you neurosurgeons are welcome to let me know if you want to give a presentation on this channel. Uh, yes, no okay. problem. Okay, Stefan, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, on to Satya uh, Sanap, uh, Senapati from uh, India, now in Japan. Hello, uh, Sanya. Satya, I'm sorry. Hello. Go ahead, Hello. Satya. Uh, Go ahead, Satya. Could you please introduce yourself and, and then you can go on to your presentation and welcome. Okay. Uh, hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, myself, uh, Satya Sanavati. I am a neurosurgeon from India. At present, I am doing my fellowship under Professor uh, Epo Kato at Japan. Uh, so I will be sharing my uh, paper uh, with you. Uh, is it visible now? Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's visible, but you uh, have to make it bigger. There you go. There you I, go. I think it's okay. Beautiful. So, you, you can see it, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, so my paper is on management of uh, NPH and institutional experience. Uh, I am uh, thankful for uh, to Eko Kato for giving me this platform to present my paper. I'm thankful to to Dr. Kawase and Yamada who helped me uh, in collecting the data and analyzing it. And lastly, I thank you to Dr. Takaji. A few of his slides I have uh, shared with, with me and with him, I am in constant touch. Uh, so all these uh, cases have been operated in Department of Neurosurgery, uh, Fujita Health University, Bambudani Hospital, Japan. So I go to my presentation. Uh, all of us till now know that uh, this Columbia neurosurgeon, Salman Hakim, and his colleague, they described the syndrome of NPS, and it consists of progressive cognitive decline, get difficulty, urinary incontinence, ventricular dilatation, and most important thing is normal cerebrospinal fluid pressure during lumbar puncture. Uh, if you see the etiology of this NPS, 50% are idiopathic, and another 50% are secondary cuts. Among the secondary causes, uh, the subarachnoid hemorrhage, meningitis, a traumatic brain injury are the most uh, common causes. And we have to know that the secondary NPS has higher response rate to certain procedure than idiopathic NPS. These are certain facts about the NPS that we have to know that prevalence of NPS is higher than previously estimated. In age group of 80 years and older, this prevalence rate is almost 6%. NPS is a clinical diagnosis that is based on medical history, neurological examination, and brain imaging, with CT or MRI. Diagnosis of NPS requires the exclusion of other diagnoses that would completely explain the present symptoms. So though many centers they do the TAPS test, external lumbar drain CSF and CSF infusion test, they can reliably identify patients who are likely to respond to such syndrome. So NPS is one of the few causes of dementia that is potentially reversible. And if properly selected patients have a high chance of response to such surgery. So this is our institutional uh, experience, how we approach a patient uh, of NPS. When a patient comes with a history suggestive of probable NPS, we advise CT or MRI to see the signs of hydrophallus. As other fixer, uh, you know, in our previous lectures, we had seen the beautiful picture of hydrocephalus, like large, uh, this evening, events index more than 0 0.3, DES, which is known as disproportionately, and large subagnate hydro hydrocephalus, which is a very reliable sign of uh, this idiopathic NPS. And we also measure calorical angle, and many percent we found it's less than 90 degree. In the this uh, coronal image, you can show the DES, that is, these uh, cisterns in the sylvan fields are, are disproportionately enlarged and the, uh, enlarged in compared to the uh, salsa in the convexity. 
So this is a very good reliable sign of uh, this idiopathic NPS. When we diagnose hydrocephalus, usually we subject, subject this patient to tap test. In this tap test, we do remove 30 to 50 ml of CSF uh, drained through the lumbar puncture. Then patient symptoms are assessed immediately. If improvement in patient symptom is observed, we call it a positive tap test. If there is no improvement in patient symptom, we call it a negative tap test. And this positive tap test patient we advise sun surgery. Uh, there are, uh, on for this negative tap test, tap test patient, these are the controversial patient who needs proper counseling. We have to understand that tap test has a specificity of 60 to 100 percent, but has a sensitivity of only 50 to 80 percent. So these patients needs proper counseling, then need to be explained about the risks and benefit and the success rate about this sun surgery. When they agree for sun surgery, few of these patients, we also do sun surgery. So among uh, the sun surgery, uh, we have options like VP sun, DS sun, and LP sun. And in our institute, we usually do DS sun and LP sun. Uh, there are certain strict criteria we follow while choosing the patient to whom we will do DS sun and LP sun. For VS sun subgroup, we usually choose old age with back pain, it's a history suggestive of lumbar degenerative spine disease who are bedridden, who are obese patient, and who have history of constipation. Usually, we advise such type of patient via surgery, via sun surgery. For LP sun, usually, we choose uh, patient having small ventricle, which are difficult to tap, and patient who want to avoid cranial surgery. So, if you will see, I want to say a uh, few surgical tips that we follow in our institute for LP stunt. Usually we do under a general anesthesia and position is lateral. And we use, uh, use a tube needle 14 gauze to do the lumbar puncture. This small diameter catheter is inserted to tube needle into the subarachnoid space of about 10 centimeter. Uh, this is the image you can show, uh, see, it is uh, taken from the back side, uh, showing the uh, TV needle through which the proximal catheter is going into the subarachnoid space. And another uh, point, is the, this McBurney point, we, where you open the peritoneum and put the distal end catheter. And this distal end catheter is subcutaneously drained and is connected through a programmable sound valve to the proximal end catheter. And for VS uh, sound procedure, you do in general anesthesia. Position is supine, head is rotated 60 degrees to the left with elevating right shoulder with heart pillow, and borehole is made about the parietal area. Then IJP is exposed. The atrial catheter is passed under skin from neck side to the borehole sides. These are the images from uh, Dr. Takaji that I have uh, shared in my presentation. Uh, you can see the site of borehole site and insertion of the proximal sun tube, the site of jugular vein catheter insertion. The ventricle is tapped, followed by ventricular catheter inserted. The ventricular end is connected to the anterior end to this programmable valves. Uh, we use the central venous catheter of 16 gauze, uh, which is inserted to the IGV, and inner needle, needle is withdrawn. This image showing the insertion of this a central venous catheter. The atrial catheter is inserted uh, through uh, the outer sheath. Once the inner sheath is removed through the outer sheath, the atrial catheter is inserted. This image showing the steps of insertion of uh, catheter into the atrium. The outer sheath usually is a peeled sheath. Uh, the length of insertion is about 15 centimeter from the insertion point. These are the images of Dr. Takaji showing the size of the site of borehole, the site of opening the internal uh, jugular vein. Uh, these are the um, uh, central venous catheter, this proximal uh, ventricular end catheter, atrial end catheters, the programmable valve, the steps of uh, the Seldinger technique of inserting this atrial end catheter, and the final uh, the insertion of catheter into the atrium.
Uh, this gave, this gave us an opportunity to compare the VS sound with the LP sound. With many center, they either follow either VS sound or LP sound. But in our institute, depending upon the selection criteria, we ideally do a VS sound or LP sound, which gave us an opportunity to compare uh, the complications. If you will see the VS sound and LP sound subgroup, the VS sound has a small operative field, whereas in LP sound, this is a relatively large operative field. For which we had observed the VS and having infection rate less in compared to the LP sound. Obesity, intraabdominal pressure has no influence on VS and whereas in LP sound, this obesity and the intraabdominal pressure has influence. VS and a subgroup it is suitable for patient with spinal degeneration, whereas in LP sound is unsuitable for patient with spinal degeneration. The risk of cardiopulmonary complication is there in VS and. Whereas in LP sound, uh, there is no risk of cardiopulmonary complication. Risk of hematoma is, uh, formation is there in VS sound, whereas in LP sound, there is no risk of hematoma formation. So uh, when we analyzed our operative result, it was a retro retrospective data collected from September 2014 to August 2018. Our total number of sound procedure done was uh, 92. And among these, VS sound was done in 53% and LP sound was done in uh, 39%. Uh, female to male ratio was 1.5 and mean age at presentation was 77. Sound related complications, we will uh, compare in VS sound group. Uh, there is no major complications like sound infection, cardiac problem, venous thrombosis, uh, chronic subdural hematoma formation. Only one case of brain hematoma we observed in 53 cases. Among these 39 cases, we had one history of sun infection and sun deviation, or two cases in LP subgroups. To conclude, uh, VS sound and NP sound are equally effective in management of NPS, though there is a risk of cardiopulmonary complication following VS sound. But in our series, we didn't face such complications. We conclude that VS sound is a better choice in compared to LP sound for elderly patients who are obese, bedridden, and history of back pain with constipation. Multicentric randomized control trial is further required to validate our findings. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Okay, I'm sorry, Satya, I had a little technical problems. Thank you very much for a clear presentation. Uh, and that uh, wraps up today's uh, uh, excellent webinar on normal pressure cydrocephalus. We, maybe we can uh, take a minute to uh, meet some people that haven't been introduced. Uh, good day, Abu Bakr. Could you please introduce yourself and say hello to the audience? Hello to all uh, respected and distinguished guests. Yes, we can uh, see you. I'm, I'm Dr. Obokre Daraj Salim from Sudan. I'm uh, the head uh, of the Sudanese Association of Neurosurgeons. And uh, we used to present our talks through uh, neurosurgeons TV so, so frequent. So I thank Dr. Bennett for this opportunity uh, he gave to use to give to us. And uh, I find this topic very interesting. So uh, I'm now in the theater, but uh, I couldn't miss it because it is very interesting. Uh, now I have a patient who is uh, about 71 years. He is a doctor of TNT. He has a problem, this problem. And I found great in managing him because she presented to us as a temporary meningioma. We resected it totally, and after that, the patient developed features of normal pressure hydrocephalus. We used to shunt him various by medium pressure shunt. We don't have the programmable valve. We then, we, we then he recovered initially, but returned back to his uh, to rouse state after that. And we changed to a lower pressure still the same condition. We do ATV still the same condition. Lastly, we have to resort to do uh, EDT, and I lower the pressure till it reaches about 4 millimeter mercury, and the patient is now uh, recovering. But I don't know what to do after that. 
so I am very much interested in this condition. I thank all the presenters for great experience and for their great talks, and which I find it very helpful in managing such problems. Thank you. And thank you for coming, Abu Bakr. And, and uh, there's an active kennel in Sudan. Uh, we have grand rounds every couple of weeks, and we encourage everyone to watch that. Okay, I guess uh, any comments? Let's see, anyone else we haven't introduced? Uh, Dr. Agi, are you there? Could you, did you, you introduce yourself, correct? Yeah, I introduced sir. Okay, very good. How about the phenom? Is the phenom a neurosurgeon or a student? Could you please introduce yourself? Hello. Yeah, could you please introduce yourself? I'm Dr. Saad Javed from Pakistan. I'm a resident of neurosurgery in Rawalpindi. Okay, very good. Welcome. And Marco, good to see you back. Ah, hi, John. Uh, I am uh, all the panelists here. Uh, sorry for before I was driving, so I was not uh, time to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Marco Meloni. Uh, I'm a consultant surgeon in North Italy. A frequent participant in activities. Nasser, are you there to be introduced? Are you there, Nasser? Or Nashidin? Nashidin? Uh, yeah. Nashidin, could you please introduce yourself? Or Suvagya, Su Suvagya, could you please introduce yourself? Okay, go ahead, whoever's ready. Go ahead, whoever's ready, please introduce yourself. That's the value part, valuable part of this webinar is networking. Okay, go ahead. Suvagra? Yes, could you please introduce yourself? Could you please introduce yourself? Hello, could you please introduce yourself, Subhagra? Okay. I guess I guess you're not hearing here. Hello. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. I am Dr. Sobhaya Ganigri, neurosurgeon. I want to know what is the role of uh, uh, lumbar per peritoneal sound, means uh, ventricular peritoneal sound in NPH, BP sound. Okay, go ahead, Satya. But how often you are using this BP sound, ventricular peritoneal sound? Hi, Dr. Savagya. Uh, I am from hi, India. I want to know how often you are using this BP sound, ventricular peritoneal sound in NPH. In our institute at uh, this Fujita, we are uh, hardly using BP sound. Most of our, for NPNs, either we are selecting LP sound or ventricular arterial sound. Now the preferred method is uh, ventricular arterial sound. Any particular region for that? Uh, uh, if we compare the sound related complications uh, with VP sound, it has okay. the both complications. Well, there are many, many case report of both ventricular end and peritoneal end sound blockage. You know yeah. the, all the complications that are associated with VP sound. And most of many, many times these patients are old age patients. These old age patients have history of investigation. Uh, they have obesity and uh, this sound uh, chance of sound malfunction is very high, which can be overcome by doing ventricular arterial sound. At least we can uh, avoid the complications of the intracranial pressure, which is commonly seen in this old age pressure. You, already, you are, uh, uh, in all cases, you are using the programmable sound or? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That is the beauty of programmable sound, using the programmable sound, where you can adjust the pressure and see the response rate. How uh, the people's cognitive function get is improving. Okay, thank very you, thank good. You. Yeah. I'd like, like to okay. take this opportunity to introduce Serge Eddie Maba. Hello, Serge. Hi, Dr. John. Uh, thank you very much for, for this opportunity. My name is Dr. Serge Zimba. I'm a neurosurgery resident uh, currently in Zimbabwe under Professor Kalangu. Um, I think I, I really enjoyed the talk today on normal pressure hydrocephalus. Uh, it's a condition that we kind of underdiagnose uh, in our population. And uh, even in terms of treatment, uh, uh, what we have available, programmable shunts are available in the private sector, but not necessarily in the public uh, institutions. 
So uh, the cost of management of uh, that particular condition will be uh, much for our population. But uh, I'm grateful nonetheless. Thank you for the opportunity. Very, very good. Welcome, uh, Serge, uh, to any of our activities. Uh, Nishadan, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, sir. Yes, we can hear you fine. Yeah, I am Nashadin Aziz uh, from Kurdistan region of Iraq. I am resident of neurosurgery here. Thank you for this nice presentation and thank you for all the presenters. It was really a nice topic, a nice presentation. Great, great. We hope to include the communities like Kurdistan and Iraq in these activities. Uh, as, and we'd like to get you guys to do your own channel eventually, but we'll, we'll take it step by step. Uh, yeah, great job. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Welcome to shot. And we'll be talking. Uh, I want to show you the platform and anyone. We'll be uh, waiting. Want, we'll be waiting. <laughs> yeah. And anyone that wants to see the platform, see where we're going. Uh, welcome. Okay. We're awaiting Ipe Cherian. He's going to give two presentations on uh, a couple of presentations on aneurysm. And, I, and we're going to go where we want to go with this platform. It'll be interactive so that you guys can ask Ipe questions or make comments, and we'll, we'll essentially let Ipe run it uh, when he comes. Uh, but he's go I think uh, it's going to be an, an, an interesting session. So just hang on there. He should be here.